Yo, what's going on my people? Welcome back to the Lift Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. It's the host himself, Ted Talk Money, coming back at you to tell y'all something. We're going to be getting back to our roots, my people. We're going to be getting into a deeper thing here. So the reason why you want to stick around for the end is so you have a better understanding of the banking industry, ultimately how vital Ripple is. And ultimately, of course, how XRP is going to be vital as well. So, of course, if you're kind of new to our channel, we're really about information. But today I'm going to be making sure that I can try to stuff all all this information I have for you guys in a quick segment <laughs> as well as I can. So putting it out there, if you've never seen this flow before, uh, we're going to be talking about gold. We're going to talk about stable coins and, of course, XRP. Uh, if you guys can see this right here, this is the chosen five. Uh, chosen five ISO cryptos. If you could see right here, this is ISO 20022. This is a standard. We're going to be talking about JP Morgan's involvement with that standard as well. Uh, again, you got to understand, man, this our channel really started, the, you know, banging the ISO drum. And that's really where we're going to stick. You know, we really have a passion for utility crypto. So if you have one as well, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel. So let me start up top right quick. So you guys know that, of course, Ripple is going to be issuing their quote unquote stable coin. Right. One thing I want you guys to see here, having an understanding, a stable coin doesn't per se have to be a coin or a token or a one to one back dollar. A stable coin really is just a price. OK, of a token or a, or a crypto that is pegged to a commodity. So that could be dollar metals, uh, you know, commodities, assets and whatnot. And of course, everything is going to be coming on chain. So if you didn't know, guys, I'm, I'm spilling absolute beans for you in the beginning. All right. If you didn't know the IMF, that is the International Monetary Fund, they've already approved XRP and XLM as stable coins. You see what I mean? They've already done that. We've gone over, we've presented that uh, publication for you guys so many different times. Of course, if you're not kind of lost with what we're talking about here, subscribe to our channel and dive through our library. Seriously, our, just go through the playlist. Um, but the next part I want to show you right here is, of course, with, with this flow, uh, they're saying here that it will be a backing with one to one XRP to an ounce of gold. So that brings me to this point right here where you have um, uh, Co Bessie, just this letter came out saying gold is now up 30 percent in six months, posting one of the best six months gains in history. During this time period, four rate cuts have been priced out and the U.S. dollar hit its highest since November 2023. Meanwhile, risk on investor appetite is at an all time high. Crypto just hit a new all time high. Every single factor has historically led to lower gold prices. What's going on? You have two key factors. Central banks are stock stocking up on gold and geopolitical tensions are skyrocketing when gold is behaving strangely it leads you to one key question does someone know something so i want you guys to see this right here i want to lead you lead you with this so you see gold is already pumping doing what it's doing uh meta co if you guys don't know this is a ripple owned company look what they said once live in 2024, this year, HSBC's new digital asset custody service will complement Orion, the bank's platform for issuing digital assets. So HSBC's recently launched offering for tokenized physical gold is going to be um is going to be coming together to form this this offering for their institutional clients and you could see that right here it's more and more for this real world <clears throat> asset tokenization hsbc already tokenizing gold on chain so i want to share this for you before you even got off this thing understand xrp can hit 93 cents we just have to get past this crucial level right past 66 cents once we get past 66.5 we potentially can be getting to the 93 cent level okay according to dark defender uh, over on twitter he's always letting you guys know and to keep faith okay in xrp also another project that is over on the xrpl we want you guys to understand and know they are blowing up a crypto trading fund uh, really, I want you guys to keep this in mind for the new person that is watching. This project is actually going to be having a cross chain bridging mechanism uh, for Matic and the XRPL. So they're saying that they're going to be uh, really making sure that's in operation and fully available for everyone by September of this year. So keep that in mind, guys. Of course, the reason why we talk with you guys so much about this project is because it has such a low supply. They're working with XRPL and the price action so i want to show you guys the roadmap real quick so you guys can know this is a legit project i'm not you know trying to you know pull the wool over your eyes or anything like that 
Uh, but the big point, you can see it, that they actually want to launch their own decks. OK, this crypto trading fund wants to launch their own decks and, of course, have a fund exchange, y'all. So this is really cool. Uh, again, for the new person that's watching, only one hundred and twenty million is the total supply on this thing. Twenty five percent for liquidity. Uh, you have twenty five percent team tokens and about sixteen percent for marketing. Uh, again, if you've never seen this list before, the top XRPL tokens by volume, you see it right here. Uh, so, uh, CTF token right here, number eight. You see Brad, you guys can see, we were telling you guys about that last time. You guys can see this thing's up 92%. And look, somebody else already is coming back right here with another meme coin, Gensler. Somebody just minted Gensler up 102% on the day. So really how, if you guys want to get involved in all these XRPL, um, you know, XRPL, uh, projects and whatnot. You know, the AMM is now in operation, so you have a lot more DeFi jumping off. Uh, you can head over to XP Market. Uh, this is a really an easy place. You could just swap if you have a bunch of XRP and you want to get involved with, uh, like I said, for example, um, you know, all these different projects, or if you want to grab yourself some CTF, definitely want to grab yourself some CTF because you have you have this cold little arbitrage that's actually happening. Look at this over on on the XRPL CTF is going for 50 cents, but over on Matic, you guys can see it's going for a dollar. So if you if you're really able to bridge and that's what they really want, that's what they're talking about is having a bridge. So if there's any time there's a, a, a arbitrage like that, you could just simply bridge over to that chain and you of course would benefit uh from those from that price action so of course uh, i'll leave you guys a link in the descriptions you know to give you instructions on how to buy some and whatnot not financial advice just of course we're, we're ready to watch this thing go to the moon also want to celebrate too guys we've been talking about this project when it was around 500 holders now there's about 2,000 holders over on matic so that is really beautiful looking forward to the success of this project now this is the part where you really want to listen up, okay? I'm going to be showing you guys some media uh, coming out from a managing director over at JP Morgan talking about ISO 20022. So you have to listen up. She kind of has a thick accent, but listen up. Tell us a little bit about your background, where you're coming from, uh, how you're related to the topic, and then we'll just dive in um, to, the, to, the, to the content. Sure. Um, so I'm Hinata Vlanova Lobo. I'm the head of uh, global clearing at JP Morgan. That means I'm responsible for all the cross border payments processed by JP Morgan. Um, we clear about $10 trillion a day, so it's massive. Uh, I've been with the bank for 13 years now, um, now based in, in New York, but I'm Brazilian. So I spent 10 years uh, running um, payments or within the payments uh, uh, team in Brazil building local capabilities. And about two and a half years ago, I relocated to New York to run this global um, team, the Global Clearing. And since then, I've been highly involved in driving the ISO 222 migration at JP Morgan. Um, so this has been a multi-year program, uh, lots going on. And uh, more recently, lots of uh, new MIs or market infrastructures going live. And in fact, today we're just going live with CHIPS, which is one of the, the most important clearing houses in the US. So timing is really good. So I'm excited to be here. Lots to, to share uh, and, and uh, happy to, to go through questions and also you know, provide lessons learned about our uh, own journey with uh, ISO 222. So JP Morgan moves about $5 trillion a day, massive amounts of funding. All right, of course, obviously when it comes down to clearing and settling, we need that quickly. So look at this, doing some digging out there, you all can see here, that's the, I gotta kind of share this for the new person. Lyft Capital is here to make sure that you know what's going on underneath, okay? Between the lines, seriously. You definitely wanna get in tune with our community. Our community is so well-educated. I'm so proud of what we really have going on here at Lyft Capital, seriously. And if you are as well, appreciative of what we have going on here, definitely hit the like, and if you're not a part of our community, subscribe to our channel. So doing some digging, this is actually out from the BIS. And what they're talking about is actually cross-border payments. And look, identification for oversight. The G20 has identified the governance and oversight of cross-border payment system interlinking arrangements. Did you hear that? That's how they can say a one world government in front of you. That's how they can say a new financial system in front of you. Cross-border payment system interlinking arrangements 
in particular, uh, in particular of the FPS, which is Fast Payment Systems, as a priority action in helping to achieve its 2027 cross-border payment target. So for the person that's kind of like, oh, man, we, I thought it was 2025, yeah, 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 all that. The point is, I'm sure you notice that all of the utility tokens, all of the utility coins, all the ISO cryptos, they're not really moving like, you know, Boo Boo Shiba. It's not really moving like Solana. It's not really moving with the rest of the market. I think there's a reason for that, folks. Obviously, as you have all this behind the scenes action going on with gold and whatnot, I personally believe that they're they're making sure that there's a, a difference, okay, that there's going to be a major change. And of course, they don't really want anybody you know, retail to have anything that we're going to be needing for the next decades, okay? So keep that in mind. G20 countries already saying that this cross-border payment system interlinking arrangements, which means interoperability, folks. You know, it's 2024. Let's think about 2025, 2026. We're learning about the banking industry. So if you didn't know, Ripple's already involved with ISO 20022, that actual standard I was telling you all about. You see, with ISO, it's a it's a world standard. It it, it goes above your jurisdiction. It goes above, above your favorite political party. It goes beyond all what, you know, your preferences, what you like, what you don't like, all that. A ISO standard is an ISO standard. Standard. So what you're seeing is that's the special thing about these cryptos, IOTAs down here, is that these, these cryptos are compliant. They're compatible with this standard. So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, <clears throat> but for the new person that is watching, you need to know how vital Ripple is to the banking industry. And don't let none of these clowns on Twitter try to make you think, you know, and, and, and try to, you know, uh, 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 disrespect Ripple for what they do. So in May of 2020, Ripple announced that it became a part of the ISO 20022 standards body, basically meaning the governance body for this, this standard. Now, ISO 20022, de facto global data standard for mobile or modern payments. OK, so when you hear that there is a crypto or a network that is compliant with this standard. All right. That's showing you there's a potential here for DLT. It's showing you there's a potential here for the linking of the digital economy and, of course, the traditional financial institutions. So here you have it earlier this year. You know, there was already put out about, you know, in the central banking uh, highlights, they were putting out and saying that these legal mandates for CBDC issues issuance is still murky. You understand what I'm saying? It's rare. You understand, you know, we, we talk a lot. Again, if you're new to the channel, we talk a lot about central bank digital currencies. And y'all, you know how we talk. You know how it is. You see but the point is, is that they're working behind the scenes when it comes down to above above ground. Right. Laws are lacking. You know, uh, respondents say they're vested with the authority to issue a CBDC. But they've seen that their broad findings say that it's lacking a legal authority to issue a CBDC. All of that. You have all of these central banks looking and researching and making and all of these mandates that they're trying to create when we all know, we all know and can see it now that we need to have a agnostic exchange token for institutional value and bulk settlement. And that's exactly what XRP is going to be doing. OK, you see, the, like showing you all uh, uh, articles like this should just solidify and understand how much of an edge Ripple has. Okay, they're not going to ditch XRP, right? That's that's not their thing. They they they've said it repeatedly that they want the XRPL to grow. Okay, so with that being said, um, I'm going to show you guys this image that I had. Um, this is November 2023, but keep that in mind that Ripple already has six live projects and 20 more in discussion, um, irrespective of the SEC case. So again, and this was in November. Right. Obviously, they're going to be working with much more central banks than that. Ripple is working with 30 central banks around the world. Seriously, you know, a, one big thing before I got into this thing, before I made this video, I said, what is it that they need to know? Why would somebody want to re watch this? And I need you to understand how vital Ripple is to the banking industry and how ultimately vital XRP is to the whole banking industry. Okay, sent CBDCs, uh, tokenized gold, all of it is going to be coming together. So I appreciate you for making it to this part of the video. This is the part where I, I, you know, we have to look out for our real ones. A lot of the dunderheads, a lot of people who don't have enough attention 
Their attention span is so short. They already they already hopped off the bus. You made it this far. So this is where I'm going to give you the juice. OK, dig this. So, you know, looking out here, Ali G, follow him over on Twitter. He says I'm nice here. Perfect timing. Third or third April, the BIS announced Project Agora, which we went over with you guys. The next day, Ripple announced their one to one USD stablecoin. The uh, Project Agora, if you guys don't know, it was um, it's basically going to be tokenization. You know how people are doing this real world asset tokenization. Yaze Skip, they're basically talking about doing more and more of that on chain. So actually, you know what? I want to actually allow you guys to have, you know, a little bit more information. I'm going to go ahead and play this media for you so you guys can have a little bit of a better understanding. But my point is that they announced it about Agora. Then the next day they announce this stable coin. And on the ninth, folks, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five days later, the BIS releases their paper on stable coins, which we're going to be going over. You guys can see regulatory responses to their promise of stability. You see, Ripple, you know, Bitcoin, a lot of the DGENs and whatnot feel that Bitcoin is, you know, the new money. You know, they can't control us. They're, you know, you know, down with your financial institution. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the, you know, the DGEN. And the thing about Ripple is they came in almost like the DGEN. They came in almost as the renegade. But the, you know, 600 pound gorilla in the room that's working with you. You see, Ripple could have taken this whole thing and, you know, you know, as as well as this company is run, they could have just really not worked with regulators at all. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Yes, obviously, you know, the SEC would have eventually got on you, but Ripple wouldn't be who they are today. You see? So I find this obviously fascinating because there are so many connections with central banks and Ripple. So let me go ahead and play this media for you guys because I said I would. It's about two minutes, but you guys can understand a little bit more about it. But the point here. The public and private sector will collaborate in this project. The public and private sector. Okay, dig this. Oh, hold on. Agora is the most ambitious project launched by the BIS Innovation Hub so far. Its reach is global. We have seven leading central banks from around the globe that are participating. They are the Bank of France, which is representing the Euro system, and then the Bank of Japan, Bank of Korea, Bank of Mexico, Swiss National Bank, Bank of England, and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The project is uh, envisaged as a public-private collaboration. Today, almost all cross-border payments are done via commercial banks, with final settlement taking place as needed across the books of central banks. Project Agora will maintain this division of labor and wants to leverage private sector expertise and know-how. Hence, major banks and other firms with significant presence in the cross-border payment space will be invited to join us on this journey. And uh, the in Institute of International Finance is going to be uh, convening the private sector. Now, Agora is a name that has been chosen with great care. In ancient Greece, Agora was the marketplace or the place where citizens would gather to decide things. And in our upcoming digital marketplace, the public and private sector will meet with the ambition of developing a new paradigm for improving cross-border payments. We will embrace new technologies as well as laying down the legal foundations and business processes for new forms of financial infrastructure. So as you guys can see, this Project Agora, Greek for Marketplace, bringing about seven central banks together, Bank of France, Japan, Korea, Mexico, Swiss National Bank, Bank of England, huge Ripple partner, by the way, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, coming together, okay, to work in a partnership with a large group of private financial firms, folks, private sector, convened by the Institute of International Finance. So keep that in mind, the IIF. OK, 
the Bank of Japan, Korea, Mexico, Swiss Bank, Bank of England, all of them, they are heavily involved with Ripple. We've gone over that. Swiss National Bank, Bank of England, all the way around. They love Ripple. So you see, the thing is, is we're going to be seeing more and more of these tokenized commercial bank efforts towards digital currency. You understand what I'm saying? More and more of this, inst uh, more and more of that. So now you can see again what they said in their press release. They're going to be working with a large group of private financial firms. You see here in the B in the BIS committee list on payment and market infrastructures, you have Ripple already involved as a task force member. Ripple, the director of their payment operations, is a task force member for the BIS committee list. And next to this, you see the association of Jessica Rayner and as her association with the Institute of International Finance, okay? So the thread goes further. This is Jessica Rayner herself. She was in a on a panel discussion with Navin Gupta about four years ago. So my point is that you have all of these banks coming together, working together with Ripple for so long. They've been doing this for quite a while. Remember, guys, what I said, what I said here. You have Ripple working already with six live projects already working with 30 central banks around the world. So for them to announce this Agora, this marketplace with all of these central banks that already are working heavily with Ripple, and then the BIS releases a paper, a statement in regards to stablecoin regulations. Even further, this Jessica Rayner person is a advisory board member for the Digital Dollar Project, which we've been telling you guys about is, again, the closest thing we have towards a dollar CBDC project. Now, the thing is about the Digital Dollar, it's going to be the last one out the gate. You see, it, it, it just to share the beans with you guys, it's these, these CBDCs, like I shared with you earlier, it's pretty murky right now. Even though they're, they're researching, they're developing, they're making the framework for everything we're going to be stepping into. We have to understand that central bank digital currency issuance is going to be something of prime, prime importance. And the reason why you have Stellar and Ripple being approved as stable coins is because you have two separate things, wholesale central bank digital currencies and retail central bank digital currencies. Two different things here, folks, two different things. So keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. You have these connections here. You have the connections already, of course, with the digital dollar ripple continuing to move forward. And also the last one I want to leave you with is that they, they say that they're going to be publishing audits for their asset reserves in regards to their stable coin. OK, so seriously, I want you to understand you made it to this part of the video. This is the reason why you really want to subscribe to Live Capital is because we want you to see this thing for what it is. The vital part of this is for you to understand how how vital. Ripple is to, of course, the banking industry. And to really reiterate again for you so you can understand for the new person that's, you know, hearing all this about XRP and whatnot, when they joined the standards body, that meant and the only, OK, Ripple was the first, the only company focused on DLT. You have to really understand that since 2020, the banking industry has seen the absolute potential of DLT, OK, distributed ledger technology. So I was looking through the uh, the BIS official publication here. Uh, a few things that were really poking its head out to me. I don't want to hold you up too much, but you can see here reserve asset requirements. That is big that we have to really realize. But look at what number 24 says. Frameworks across jurisdictions set diverse requirements for various aspects of reserve assets. Meaning that right now, what we're going to be seeing is this transition. If we're going to be having a new system, if we're going to be having this whole new digital quantum financial, you know, just absolutely everything is going to be on chain. Well, there has to be a transition. What we're seeing here is, yes, these frameworks are going to be put in place. We've talked with you guys about Mika. You know, there's so many regulations are coming. That's a that's a tagline for our channel. Regulations are coming. I'm the crypto Paul Revere. But the reason why I go over these official publications with you is so you can understand how these people speak with each other. They're showing you right now how they're going to be. You know, when you when all you know, if you're just in lost in the sauce, just kind of following the lagging data of retail, well, you're always going to be behind. But if you pay attention, do your research, key in, guys. Seriously, why we tell you dive through our library. OK, this wisdom, this information, especially the, in this industry with crypto. They in the beginning, they're a lot more transparent. And as they as things progress and build, that's when they become a little bit more hidden, you know, and a little bit more cryptic. Right. Go figure. <laughs>
But listen, if this was a lot for you, um, I definitely, definitely suggest that you follow us over on Twitter, of course. Join us over on Patreon. Um, if you really do are bullish, of course, for the future of all of this. Seriously, I definitely think you need to follow us over on uh, Instagram as well. And definitely get in tune with our community. If you're bullish for any of these coins that you're seeing right here, leave us a comment. Drop a comment. Let us know how things are, of course, going for you on a, on a, on a personal level. Just to really put it out there. This channel is about health, wealth, and wisdom. And this community is prayed for. So if you, again, want to get blessed and receive your 24 hours of blessings, be sure that you join us, of course. With that being said, folks, I'll holler at you later. Peace. Peace.